Your challenges are real. So is your God. Your current situation may not be what you want. Remember, the planner of your life said, He will bring you to an expected end. It will end in praise. Amen. God bless you, gifted podcast listener. We are glad to share God's word with you. Our goal for this podcast is to boost up your faith until all fears are gone. We believe God's word is the solution to all our needs, and therefore, Pastor Kwame has responded to God's call to teach God's word and make it as practical as possible. As you make time to enjoy today's podcast, may God enrich your life with his word. My name is Rabina. Let's enjoy God's word. Amen. The entrance of his word brings light and understanding to the simple. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is the source of life. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Nothing that was made was made. A word have I hidden in my heart. That is why I don't live in sin. The word of God is forever established. He has been exalted the word above his name. The word of God is displayed in beautifully in the middle of the bible in the book of psalms you begin to see right at the center the word of god just expressed that is where you find is honey on my lips the word of god has made me wiser than my teachers the word of god the word of god i want to uh recommend the word of god to you and it will do you good let's pray father we want to honor your name today we bless you for you being our teacher who always instruct our heart to grow better into the fullness of what we are in your head. There is a picture of us in your head. We want to become that picture day by day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. All right, so um, I'm going to share God's word as usual with you on today. Let's get busy. I'm looking f- uh, at... The book of John, by the way, John, John's gospel is unique in a sense that all the other gospels begins to talk about Jesus from a perspective, which is from earthly perspective. You notice that Matthew will talk about Jesus from the genealogy of the Jewish family. And you Luke will talk about historic evidence and Mark will just talk about the miracle. But John takes the angle from heaven that God existed in heaven and God transitioned to be man. And that's what we'll be going today. But let me read a verse today from the book of um, John chapter number 10 chapter number nine rather division number 10 it says they ask who healed you he told them the man they call jesus who healed you he told them the man they call jesus i want to talk to you today about who is the man they call jesus who is the man they call Jesus. Ah, this is a very deep podcast, so pay attention. But it is, I believe I will say the most important podcast out of all the five years I've been sharing God's word on this platform and other places that this podcast is broadcast. This to me is the most important podcast of all all right so one of the things that i try to discipline myself to do is i read the verse step one step two i exegete the test in other words i don't just say things into the bible i let the bible say what the bible is saying and if you want to do that you have to tell the audience the contest and the background and the backdrop on which the verse comes in because the bible is not written by verses the bible is one complete book if you teach a verse and you don't know the book you're not supposed to it's against the bible to teach a verse if you don't know the book the verse is coming from all right so i always try to 
pull back so you can see the bigger picture but by the way this is the story about um, the man who was born um lame and was begging and then jesus comes in and jesus heals him and they begin to ask isn't he the one is he the one isn't the one that kind of guy and that that guy particularly is what we are talking about and so they find he was blind so they this is the same particular guy if you will recall that the disciples said is it because his father has sinned or his mother has sinned this is the guy we are looking at and so the verse I read is when he was healed and then people begin to marvel whether it's him or it's not him. And then eventually he says, yes, it is me. And then they ask, so who healed you? And then he responds, the man they call Jesus. So with that said, you understand where the verse is coming from. Now, the next step, which is important, is now application. And that's where we are going today. The first thing I want you to know is... I'm sure this podcast is more of a a support to the body of Christ. So we don't assume some people may not be fully devoted to Christ, but they're on the podcast and they're on the platform or they listen to other places where the podcast is broadcast. But primarily, mostly everybody on the WhatsApp platform by the way this podcast you don't have to be on the whatsapp platform to listen the podcast is on apple apple on spotify on i have radio so it's all over the place we only created this group so that you can get direct connection to me should you have anything and we also have other programs that we do like the gifted care every november and things like that right so back to the subject matter who is the band they call jesus um let's start from what we know and we go to where we don't know jesus is everything yet we don't know him like we should when we start to talk about who is the man called jesus i will come back to share really what this podcast the meat of the podcast but let's start from what we know jesus is the bread of life jesus is the soon coming king jesus is the messiah the bible says who do men say that i am and he says some say you are Elias. some say you are john the baptist and the spirit of the lord came upon peter and peter said you are the christ the son of the living god it's a flesh and blood has not revealed this to you so when we talk about jesus we will say that he is the messiah he is the only begotten son of god he is one of the many the the, the triune god the three in one god he is god the son he is also the bright morning star the the seed that comes to crush the head of the snake he is the lily of the valleys he is the 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 essence the life the truth he is the word of god he is everything and more in the book of colossians says he's the express image of god all things find is bearings and understanding through him and for him he is the the god man he is the the root of jesse the 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 the, 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 the son of david all of that encompassed that is jesus for all of us jesus is um the 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 the, the essence of god's gift to man he is the the promise he is the mediator between god and man he's our savior he is the lord amen now you put all of that together and you begin to talk about what we call christocentric or theology of christ christology to be precise right all right so all of the things i said and many more that you know he's everything and more now all of that can consume you and i and still not get to know jesus by the way the things i said are big deal and this deep and that is who he is but that's not who he is the first thing I want you to understand is that let me let me let me let me let me not make myself say it. Let me let the Bible say it. 
all the things I said, you and I will be on the same page when I say that Paul, the apostle, the greatest apostle of the new covenant, Paul knew all that I said because he was very knowledgeable in the Old Testament. And he was also the highest knowledge in the New Testament. So for Paul, who knows everything in the Old Testament, the shadows of Christ, and also knows everything in the New Testament, for him to say that, that I may know him, that it means that who is the man Jesus is not all the things I said. Because Paul knows he's a mediator. Paul knows that he's a rema. Paul knows that he's a logos. Paul knows that he is everything. So when Paul says that I may know him, you understand that then Christology is not what Jesus is. So to simplify it for you today, what he came to do and who he is are two different things. All the titles I give, the bread of life, the lily of the valley, the root of Jesse, the, the, the stem of David, whatever description I gave, the express image, the Messiah, the son of the living God, the bread of life, the light of the world, the way, the truth, and the life, all of these things, it embodies the function. But where we are going today is that when God became a man, that particular man that God has become, who is that man? <sighs> when God becomes a man, we have to study that man that he has become. God becoming a man is a purposeful move. It was not a random move. And the reason God became a man is what all of the accolades and all of the title I'm, I am painting, that is what it comes with. When God becomes a man, then he has become the light of the world. So all the description and the, I, and the, and the worship terminologies I'm using to describe Jesus, it is what happens when God becomes a man and it embodies the function. But Paul didn't want to focus on the function. He wanted to ask the question, who is Jesus that I may know him? And then he also added the fellowship process of his suffering. But that key word that I may know him is what I want to explore with you today. You can get caught up with Jesus as the, the word of God being expressed in the redemptive work and miss who Jesus is. Three quick things and I'll wrap my podcast up that from today I want you to see it. And when if you can see it, then you begin to know who Jesus is. All that I talked about is his function, his kind of his office, his I his kind of uh persona, his power, his strength, his mind. Alright. Okay, so now let's go back to a clear picture a blank canvas now picture this on a blank sheet I write God has become a man right so we call him the God man most of the things we as we describe because he's 100% God 100% man it falls into the category of the fact that he's the son of God but I want to talk to you about the son of man all right when paul is looking at this jesus the first thing he's asking is i want to take a closer look at him and be consumed by the question who is this man called jesus when you see him when you look at him who are you looking at I submit to you that Jesus, that man Jesus, number one, is your identity. Ha, hear me. Until you see Jesus as your identity, you don't know and you won't know him. 
when God became a man, we saw our identity for the first time. And so what Paul is yearning and crying and hoping to come to is that when I see him walking, my spiritual eye is open for me to see that this is me walking right there. The embodiment of the man Jesus is actually my identity. And so knowing Jesus is the only thing that makes sense when it comes to reconciling with myself. Jesus is the access to myself. Because before Jesus came to the picture, we were all lost. And you and I know that man is lost. Nothing else satisfy until I cannot understand that the man walking on the shores of Galilee is actually myself. This is how I look like. Whatever is in him is the real me. Are you hearing me? The man Jesus is actually your true identity. Is somebody hearing me? So until you see Jesus as your identity, then you'll be talking about he's a bread of life. You'll be consuming him instead of becoming like him. So first thing, who is the man Jesus? The man Jesus is your identity. So when Paul says that I may know him, he has come to the recognition that the more I study this person, the more I understand a little bit of who I am. And I want to know all about him. Because that in actuality is how I become as real as possible so number one jesus the man jesus is your identity amen you don't know your identity because jesus is your identity without christ you don't have an identity and I don't want to say it like that because it will still be religious in your head. What I'm saying is that the man Jesus, the son of man, that person, that 33 year old boy or young man, his entire being studied and, and, and desire to know that journey, that that course, that study, that that pursuit. Oh my goodness. Can you see the picture I'm painting? Imagine Jesus coming to pass by. The reason you are chasing him is because it feels like you just saw yourself run in front of you. All uh, Americans have developed their movies to the point where those crazy concepts like that happen, where somebody will be in the scene where he will see himself running across the street. And because he doesn't understand anything, he tried to chase himself because the plot is said that they put the person in a strange place and he chases himself to discover who he is. When you see Jesus and you pursue him with all your heart and all your mind, you are just pursuing your true identity. First one, I don't have time. Wow, my time is up. I would do, let me do, uh, there are three things that Jesus is. Let me take the next three days and talk about the second and the third. So let me leave you here. Who is the man Jesus? The man Jesus is your identity. If you know him, and if you want to know him, and whatever it takes to know him, is the same journey into coming out of 
the virtual you to the real you. All that you have picked up outside Jesus is just a try and error. This world is this world is not going to satisfy you because you are not anything outside Christ. Your true identity is found in Christ. By the knowledge of Christ, you are known. What does it mean, Pastor? It means that your relationship with Christ should be paramount because your relationship with Christ is a relationship that brings you alive. And and for me to not confuse you, basically, you are still loading until you look like Christ. Amen. So, so knowing Christ is just receiving the download that makes you play. Oh, Jesus. So, until you pursue him and go after him, you are just a file still loading. My time is up. Let's pray. Father, help us to pursue Christ so we will pursue our true identity in Jesus name Amen